class. Welcome to the lecture for 7-4. This is where we start moving on into logarithms, something that you should have seen a lot of in Algebra 2. And we should be able to go quickly, Lord willing, and uh, not have to cover a lot of this ground. Maybe you don't quite understand it as well. Here's another chance for you to practice and say what is going on. I'm going to walk you through logs quickly, but if you have forgotten, you need to review and you need to remember what logs are for. So, we need to ask ourselves, why did we invent this? Why did they come up with logs? Why is that a thing? All right, so here we have a couple of different logs, and I'm going to translate them into English for you. The first one, if you put it into English, says 2 to the what equals 4. Well, I think you can answer pretty quickly. The answer to that is two. The last one says two to the what equals eight. Well, that's pretty obviously gonna be three. But the middle one, oh, is a lot more difficult for us to try to figure out two to the what equals six. Oh, that's no fun. So this is why we have calculators. This is why they have log tables in the old days, slide rules. These are the tools that we need to be able to figure out difficult exponential questions. So the, the summary there of what I was just saying is when I see a log and when you see a log now, you're gonna ask yourself, you're gonna say the script, what power do I put on the base to get this number. What power do I put on the base to get the number? So log base 2 of 4 is saying what power do I put on 2 to get 4? You can then turn any log into a plain English sentence. The same thing that we just said therefore is, is able to be said in two different ways. You can say 2 to the 4th equals 16 or you could say, if you move all the pieces around and do some cool voodoo magic, log base two of 16 equals four. So this, this should clue you in, exponents are logs. Logs are exponents. They're the same thing, they're dealing with the same kind of thing. One is simply a rearrangement of the other. So have you, if you, if, you, if you need some sort of graphical kind of thing, I usually end up, will be end up drawing on your piece of paper to help you get it, that two to the three equals eight. That you sort of trace out this circle from two to the three, and then the circle keeps going from the three to the eight. So you start at the base. The base is home base. See what I did there? And then you go to the other side, and then you can come back with an answer. Two to the three, equals eight. So just like we learned that exponents have a lot of things that can be simplified about them, that if you have a series of numbers to, with the same base to different exponents, you can combine them, or an exponent to an exponent can be simplified, or exponents over exponents can be simplified. All of these different things have shorter ways that they can be written. The same can be done with logs because logs are exponents. So for example, you look at this one and when you've got log uh, 10 plus log 100, that's pretty uh, able to be translated quickly as to saying, what exponent do I put on 10 to get 10? And then the other one plus, what exponent do I put on 10 to get 100? So the answers to that, if you've done a lot of scientific notation in science class, should be pretty straightforward. Well, what exponent do I put on 10 to get 10? One. What exponent do I put on 10 to get 100? Two. What's one plus two? It's three. So that's not super duper rocket science. So if you recognize that logs are exponents, then we could have just said, well, what, are the, what is the one exponent that I put on uh, 10 to get 1,000? That 100 times uh, uh, 10 is 1,000, and 10 to the x times 10 to the y is 10 to the x plus y which means that if you have two logs being added, that's the same as one log being multiplied. This should correspond immediately with the properties of exponents that you know, that 10 to the x times 10 to the y is 10 to the x plus y. Log of something plus log of something else equals the log of those two things being multiplied. So the thing that you'll hear me say a lot, and you should practice saying it to yourself, two logs added is one log multiplied. 
Uh, again, all the properties of exponents that you know uh, work with uh, logs in this same way. If you have a log to an exponent, you could go out the long way and say 100 to the third is 100 times 100 times 100, which is a million. So what exponent do I put on 10 to get a million? Well, that's six. So you could go the long way there, or you could look at the original problem, look up at the log uh, 100 to the third, and ignore the three for a second. What's log 100? What exponent do I put on 10 to get 100? Well, that's two times three is six. So just like uh, if you have a power to a power, you multiply. If you have a log to a power, you can pull that out front and multiply it out front. So the, the summary here, this is a good page to just straight up copy into your notes, is the rules of exponents that we have apply necessary changes being made uh, to logs. That two logs added is one log multiplied, two logs subtracted is one log divided, and a log to a power is the same as multiplying a log. There, we've already used it here, you should have seen these uh, last year, is that there are two logs where the base is not written in any way, uh, sir not appearing in this film. If you just say log, and this is on your calculator, there's just a button that just says log, it assumes base 10, because most of us are doing scientific notation with calculators, that's what logs uh, do when they don't have a base written. And then um, there's another log, log base E, that we'll be exploring some more of. And thanks to the French, it's not natural log, NL, it is log naturel. <laughs> the French uh, make it be LN. So blame the French for that.